Hey there, greetings my friends. This is Carrie bringing you the first quarter moon episode of Tarot for the Soul. I am coming to you today from Cairo, Egypt. I left Sedona last Wednesday right after I uploaded last week's Tarot for the Soul video and here I am now. I'm going to be here for the next six weeks bringing you videos and activations from Egypt. We've got a lot going on for the rest of this month and the energy is really activating now. We're just coming out of this Mars Venus in Leo conjunction that we've had over the past few days which really inspires us to cultivate our own inner sacred marriage our own inner sacred union between our inner masculine and our inner feminine so this is almost like the beginning of this Leo energy that's coming into focus over the course of the next few weeks as we will be transitioning into the Sun coming into Leo, which of course also brings us into Lion's Gate portal season. The Lion's Gate portal happens every year when the star Sirius aligns with the sun in Leo and the earth from the earth's perspective. This is something that's been acknowledged and celebrated since ancient times in ancient cultures, particularly Egypt. The legend says that the pyramids here act as a focusing tool that amplifies the energies of Sirius as we come into this alignment. So it's a really strong time of activation. The height of the activating energy is August 8th. However, the portal opens as the sun is moving into Leo within the next week to 10 days and then the portal remains open the entire time that the sun is in Leo. I'm definitely going to do a guided meditation activation for the Lion's Gate portal from here in Egypt. I only have my Universal Rider weight deck with me so that's the deck that I'm going to be using over the course of the next few weeks. I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the astrological highlights that I'm tuning into that that really feel to be collectively inspiring us and then we're going to get into the cards. The other aspects that I really want to mention here obviously we have the first quarter moon happening in the sign of Libra this coming Saturday which really brings in an energy of sociability, romance, wanting to get out and about and interact with people which is also very aligned with this Leo energy that we've had going on over the past few days with the Mars Venus conjunction in Leo. We've got Jupiter in Pisces retrograde for almost this entire month, which has a collective influence on inwardly inspiring creative imagination. And then when we blend that with the fact that we have Saturn retrograde in the sign of Aquarius, sextiling the south node in Sagittarius. My read on that is that it's empowering and inspiring all of us to cultivate almost like a maturing of our soul gifts and an enthusiasm to share our soul gifts out into the world. All the way around, any way you look at the astrological highlights that are happening this particular week and over the course of the next few weeks, which I'll talk more about in future episodes as we're moving through this Lion's Gate portal, all in all, my read on the energies that are happening right now collectively is that we're all experiencing a time where we're actually having a big shift into more of an awakening to your true self, more of an awakening of awareness in the here and now. Like we're actually experiencing a profound shift in awakening. For those of us who feel the call and we're willing to shift into those energies, that is the energy that's available to us right now. And so the reading that we're going to do today, inviting sacred wisdom teachings to come through the tarot, is going to be aligned with what we know is going on astrologically in addition to these first quarter moon energies. Remember that the first quarter moon inspires us to begin taking decisive action in alignment with whatever intentions we set for ourselves for the new moon. So think back to whatever intentions you set for yourself 
during the new moon that we had last week. And then this week we're being inspired to get clear, have some clear decisiveness and aligning our actions with those intentions. Today, I'm gonna work with four cards. And so I've already been shuffling them as you can see. I've already taken some time to tune in. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the cards right now. And here we go. So here's one, two, three, and four. So the first card that we're gonna look at today is representing the collective energy supporting our drive in moving forward. And the card that's showing up is the Page of Pentacles showing up reversed. And when this card shows up reversed, it can indicate sometimes a lack of enthusiasm around the work that we're doing or a feeling of disconnect around that which brings a sense of passion, meaning, and purpose to our life in general. It can be experienced as an energy of blasé or even boredom. And so as this card is showing up as the message that is connected to the collective energy that's supporting our drive and moving forward, this is saying that what we all need to do right now is feel into where our inspiration is. Feel into, like reconnecting with what gives you a sense of drive? What do you have a passion for? What gives you, what lends itself to a sense of meaning and purpose in your life? Now, these things are not things that we can really rationally think into being. These are things that we sense and feel as an internal truth in our soul. And so doing meditations that enable you to connect with yourself on that level, this is what we all need to do. And another thing that I can share with you is, you know, as a lifelong psychic reader, one of the biggest questions that I get asked a lot is this very matter, like what is my sole purpose? I hear so often from people, I don't know what I like to do. I don't know what I enjoy. If you're a person who doesn't know what brings you meaning and purpose in your life, then let it be a part of your discovery right now to feel into it. Again, it's not something that you can analyze or think your way through. You have to be willing to let yourself feel your spirit. Oftentimes the biggest block to this is people who are avoiding feeling what's going on within them because of old wounds or traumas that haven't been completely healed and so you train yourself to not feel and then guess what that also includes us not being able to really feel what our inner guidance is compelling us towards so this is a time guys where we all have to be willing to take responsibility for our own vibrancy and the key is being willing to tap into that feeling space of enthusiasm, that feeling space of what you're passionate about, what brings meaning and purpose. If you need guidance with this, I'm definitely willing to help you along the way. We can have a session about it. All my contact information is in the description below. Obviously, this is a big part of how I support people on their journeys, so know that that's available. If you need help in understanding how to access your own inner guidance along these lines, it's time, guys. Like, I really strongly feel that with this Lion Gate portal energy opening up over the next few weeks, we have energy available to us to enable each of us individually to make quantum leaps forward in our level of awareness and awakening. Okay, so the next card that's coming up is representing what the challenge is. What is the challenge that is maybe standing in the way? and it's the Nine of Swords coming up reversed. The Nine of Swords in and of itself talks about what I call shadow thinking, right? So it's the shadow self leading the way. It's the fears, the worries, the concerns, the 
lack of self-esteem, the lack of self-confidence, the worst case scenario type thinking, the everything that could go wrong type thinking that ultimately puts us in a little bit of a frozen state where we feel unable to break free and move forward. So that's what the challenge is. However, the card showing up reversed as it is, says that it's time for us to liberate ourselves from the clenches of shadow thinking. So what we can all individually do to support ourselves now is to have some honest self-reflection around where have I gotten caught into shadow thinking? Where am I allowing my worries, my fears? Where am I letting that run the show? And is it helping me? Probably not. Is it beneficial? Probably not. So a part of living an awakened life as an awakened being means noticing where the shadow is coming in. We all have it, right? But having the conscientiousness to not allow that to be mistaken for factual truth and not allow it to be what's leading and guiding you forward. We have to cultivate the ability to consciously choose. We choose how we perceive the world. We use that point of view to create our reality. Are you creating an amazing, awesome dream for yourself? Or are you creating a nightmare? This is liberating yourself from the, the nightmare that comes with being entangled by shadow thinking. So the challenge of shadow thinking the message from spirit, the sacred wisdom teaching is saying it's time for us to liberate ourselves from that. Meditation is a really good tool. Affirmations, positive affirmations are another really good tool. Mantras are a good tool as well. Okay, the best way forward through the challenges. Let's take a peek at that. It's the six of wands showing up reversed. When this card shows up, upright, it typically indicates that there's acknowledgement, there's praise, positive energy shining in towards you that are giving you encouragement to move forward. When the card shows up reversed, we're the ones that have to believe in ourselves. So this is a message around cultivating your own inner confidence around who you are, what your soul gifts are, what it is that you feel compelled to bring to life. Cultivate your own inner radiance and confidence. So that's the way forward through the challenges, right? So the way to shift out of the shadow thinking that's connected to fear, worry, concern is to cultivate confidence in who you are, why you're here now, what you feel compelled to experience in this life and cultivate the confidence to do it. And then the last card that we're looking at is the overall activating message from spirit. And it's the two of swords showing up reversed. When this card shows up right side up, it can indicate paralyzing indecision. It's like we are in a little bit of an in-between time in our life where things are shifting and we feel uncertain. And so when this card shows up reversed, it's saying that we've already been experiencing this time of uncertainty. And I'm sure we can all see how collectively this whole past year or so has been a massive time of uncertainty on many levels for all of us with all that's been going on globally. But as I've talked about in my videos, this also has been serving as being almost like an incubation period for us all, where we're all gestating and cultivating, growing internally in ways that support sort of a quantum leap forward, a shift in awareness. And so this card is saying that we are coming out of that incubation period and we're coming into more of a time of clarity. The message in this card speaks clearly that it's time for us to take steps out of limbo into taking positive action forward. So ask yourself, how am I feeling guided to begin 
putting positive energy into what my deepest soul passions are. How can I utilize my deepest soul gifts as a part of that process for myself? When we go back to the sacred union energy that has just been activated earlier this week with that Mars, Venus, and Leo conjunction, the sacred feminine is the part of us that senses, feels, knows what it is that we feel compelled towards. And then the sacred masculine is setting it into action. We all have the ability to do this. Any dream or goal that we have that is aligned truly with our soul and our soul purpose, if we place our intentions, our energies, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions in alignment with that, there's no possible way that it won't manifest. Spirit wants us to experience that which is aligned with our highest soul fulfillment. But we have to first know what that soul fulfillment is before the universe can support us in that. So that's, you know, a, one of the most profound messages that's coming through for us right now. And it's not as hard as you think it is to access. It's only a matter of trusting. Gaining the insight is as easy as going within, feeling how your soul, how your heart is compelling you forward. That's the easy part. What people find challenge with and difficulty with is trusting that sense and feeling. And the reason for that is because many of us have been conditioned to not trust it. But we have to realize that's just a past conditioning and it's not rooted in factual truth. The factual truth is that our soul guidance our inner guidance truly, truly is like our navigation system that is meant to compel us forward in the direction of that which is aligned with our path of highest joy. So I invite all of you to take time this week, tune in, feel into yourself, be willing to say yes to how your heart, how your soul is compelling you and be willing to be bold, dare to take action in alignment with those things and see for yourself how the universe positively responds in co-creating your desires with you. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to see you right around the corner with another video. Stay tuned. Much love. Blessings. Namaste.